In the beginning, there was only Rubik's. They made 2x2s, 3x3s, 4x4s, and 5x5s. Now, there are many companies, ranging from Dian to Moyu to YJ to Yuxin to Chiyi to Gan to Shengxiao to Cycling Boys to Fangxi to Maru to Viku to Eden to MFA to Lanlan to Lingyao to Diensheng to Hishu, and almost certainly more to come. But what came between these eras? What came after Rubik's, but before the more modern companies? The answer is East Sheen. East Sheen is a Taiwanese-based manufacturer established in 1981 by Chen Sen Li. They specialize in plastic injection molding and sheet metal pressing, but not much is actually known about their early history. After 1981, the first mention of their existence is from late 1997, when Chen Sen Li filed a patent for a 2x2 design. This was followed a few months later by a design for a 4x4, and later a 5x5. After this, not much is known about them again until 2002, when their website was up and running, and the cubes were finally getting out to people. These were the first cubes that were considered a real competitor to Rubik's in any way, and for the time, they were pretty good. Nowadays, with so many other manufacturers having eclipsed East Sheen, there aren't many dedicated cubing stores that still sell them. In fact, the only one I could find that did was HK Now Store, which sells almost all of their products. I bought a black set, However, they also come in white. This may seem trivial now, but as the only white cubes seen before were usually very low quality, this was something new at the time. I received a 2x2, 4x4, and a 5x5, along with a free keychain 2x2 that we'll get back to in a minute. I also got a Diane Octahedron, which isn't really relevant, but quite fun. Thanks, Calvin. The 5x5 was just wrapped in plastic and came with no information, while the 2x2 and 4x4 both had a nice box and an instruction sheet. The 2x2 was very stiff right out of the box, which surprised me a lot. One of the most distinguishing features of East Sheen 2x2s is that they are known for being almost effortless to turn, seemingly gliding without any friction whatsoever. I figured that it just needed to be broken in a bit though, so I set it aside. The 4x4 was more what I was used to. Nice, smooth turning with a very unique sound on the inner layers. The 5x5 was very similar to the 4x4, which made sense as they have extremely similar mechanisms. This may seem obvious, but keep in mind the only other 4x4s at the time used a ball core mechanism and were completely different to the 5x5s on the market, so this was a new idea. The keychain 2x2 was also very stiff, but considering the size, that surprised me less than the full size 2x2. After two months, this is the result of them. The 4x4, 5x5, and keychain 2x2 are essentially identical to what they were before. The full size 2x2 is a completely different story, however. I put in a single drop of Maru Lube, and it is now possible to make a U4 with a single flick. One thing that you may have noticed is that none of the cubes seem to corner cut very well at all. This is because none of them have any springs in them at all. Not only do they not have springs, but due to how the screws are set up, it's very difficult and effectively infeasible to modify springs into. Surprisingly, this wasn't a huge issue at the time. The only competitors were Rubik's and Mephits, and neither of them had springs in their competing puzzles. An interesting note is that the 4x4 and 5x5 are exactly the same size, which is probably due to the similar mechanisms used in each puzzle. This also means that the East Sheen 5x5 is the smallest mass-produced 5x5 on the market at just 6 centimeters along each edge. Sticker quality is very similar to your average store-bought Rubik's brand of the time. Cheap paper stickers covered in a thin plastic sheet that begins to peel off and look terrible. Mine aren't too bad at the moment, but these haven't been used too much. The most obvious difference is that they don't use orange, but instead use a strange mauve colour. No one is quite sure why this is the case, but some theories have been put forward. My personal theory is that the puzzles were developed at a time when there was a slight health scare involving lead in orange dyes in children's toys. A very common orange dye is lead tetroxide, which can cause lead poisoning in high enough doses. As a result, East Sheen may have decided to use a different dye, and when they couldn't find another orange dye that was cheap enough to use, decided to switch the colour entirely. After all, if it was due to wanting to avoid a copyright lawsuit from Rubik's, it seems more likely that the entire scheme would be different. Thanks to Tony Fisher for bringing up the lead tetroxide idea. 
The EastGene 2x2 can't easily be disassembled without breaking it, and indeed the instruction sheet in the box advises you not to, instead providing a basic solution guide. The 4x4 and 5x5 can be disassembled though, and the instruction sheets only tell you how to disassemble and reassemble the puzzle. Unfortunately, this is a bit of a nightmare even with the directions. The aforementioned lack of springs means the cube doesn't hold itself together very well, and they actually recommend using a piece of card and a cup to keep the puzzle in place for the first few steps. Also, the hidden edges on the 4x4 can fall out of place during assembly, and you usually won't notice until you try and turn the puzzle, and it locks up. Very frustrating when it happens, and very irritating to fix. It's easy to look at East Sheen cubes now and wonder how anyone could have considered them decent puzzles. Indeed, compared to today's offerings, they cannot compete. Their corner cutting is almost non-existent, and the 2x2 is so fast as to be nearly uncontrollable at times. However, they were far better compared to anything else at the time. The Rubik's 2x2 was astonishingly stiff and very small, and the 4x4 and 5x5 from both Rubik's and Methods were very large and tended to lock up seemingly at random. The East Sheen puzzles were the first to show that these sizes can be done okay, and they represented the first step into a new era of speed cubing.